So guys, this is one of the reasons why we can will never go to Arise Television for interview. Because people like Rufai are there to dish out the right questions to him and to insist he answers those questions. Because guess what? We saw Wiki, you know, dodging most of the questions that were thrown at him yesterday. So I wanted to take a look at the reaction of Rufai. Rufai has commented on that interview that Wiki granted. And guess what? It will shock you to know that this is actually the reason why Wiki keeps, you know, staying away from Arise Television because of people like Rufai who will dish out the right questions. I mean, the real questions Nigerians want to hear Wiki answer. Take a look at Rufai's reactions. The FCC Minister evaded most of the questions and said some things that were away from the margins of veracity. Number one, he talked about the fact that the reason why the fight started was because Fubara was trying to remove the National Assembly personnel. There was pretty much coexistence in the National Assembly until they started pivoting to him because of the initial fight he had with them and things went awry. Secondly, he also talked about the fact that yeah, he's got, he needs nothing from Fubara. But the question is, why is he putting a hand in River State? He was talking about the court case filed by the APC. He's in the PDP. What's his concern with the APC's case? And why is it that all of a sudden this man has become empowered? The APC person has become empowered. Why? All of a sudden. Another question I would have loved to ask him yesterday is, he talked about the fact that he went through a lot of disruptions in his own tenure and everything. Is that good enough to not meet up that level of destruction? He said the violence was because of um, the fact that uh, he didn't follow the court order. But he also forgets that there was another subsisting yes. court order by the River State High Court. He praised the judiciary, but he also condemned the state government for going to get court order for River State High Court. So if you can do it successfully, how about you getting checked by the River State High Court and you're saying, oh, they have a lot of expertise there? Then he went further to say, oh, Fubara should, he knows the people that did the acid, he should prosecute them immediately. No, he has to go to a judicial power of inquiry to be able to get to remote courses, because if he goes ahead and he becomes high-ended, he will be seen as, as a dictator. So, I think the man likely just evaded most of the questions, because I would have loved to put most of those questions in, I'm pressing on those questions. What we just call for is, let peace reign. And he also said uh, it's not because of resources fighting for her that he has his own budget. Please, Mr. Wiki, that money is for the FCT, it's not for you. Why do you call it your own budget? You might just oversee it as the FCT minister. And when you're not there tomorrow, another person will oversee the budget. Please, okay. let That's peace reign. Okay. I'd actually said that that uh, meeting, the round table of Rivers Elders, should be convened by the president and that he should bring them all to the table. I don't know to what extent or how that would be possible, but that perhaps might be the beginning of the path to peace in the state. But let me just uh, touch on one thing, which is this thing around the arsonists and this, uh, th this penchant for destroying state properties and the commonwealth of the people when there's a crisis in the state. Yes, yesterday, I had talked about the fact that last year, actually almost a month to this day, uh, 29th of October 2023, the State House of Assembly was also torched. It was burned. So, I mean, there were different variety of stories around that. And when the governor now says that he wants to unveil, unravel and investigate the people behind it, then you'd go back to what's happening with those who were behind that particular incident. Yes, there, um, the um, a federal high court in Abuja had arraigned five people to that, you know, to answer for that. But usually what happens, and I hope that the people will listen to this, is that there are the low hanging, the easy praise, who are then picked and then they take on the responsibility or pay for the price of the things that whoever it is is sponsoring them does. Till now, the one it hasn't the case hasn't been settled, the matter is still in court. But it's just to say that when justice is prolonged for such a long time, especially for a crime like that, it's almost, you know, it's delayed. It's almost justice denied. And so when the, the, the governor says that, yes, he's going to ensure that everybody who was responsible for that will be brought to the book, that would be a great deterrence. That would be a great way to kill impunity in the state where any small thing, you burn the, you, you, you destroy properties, you waste the people's money. And then the people, even after the dust has settled, as we've now heard, thankfully, that in River State, there's relative calm and peace in the 23 local council areas. But Who's going to pay for the damage that has happened? It's the people who are going, the money that should go to infrastructure, money that should go to running the state, money that should go to paying salaries, money that should go to fixing roads, would then go to rebuilding something that some people 
who felt aggrieved or in a political play decided to destroy. This is what is happening in our states when we talk about um, politics. And that's why I hope the governor will make good on his word and not just a big show of a statement that those who are behind the arson will be brought to book and they'll be made an example of so that in the future we, people just don't resort to destroying state properties because they feel personally aggrieved or politically aggrieved in the state. Okay, what are the issues in uh, River State yesterday? They are as follows. The first is that uh, Governor Fubara uh, tried to uh, assert control. Two things he did yesterday. He swore in four new commissioners. And after that, he also uh, set up uh, a seven-man panel of inquiry. The four commissioners, he was telling them about their responsibility, how to uh, help to move River State forward. The seven-man panel of inquiry was telling them to investigate the issue of arson that occurred on October 7 in River State. And he told that uh, commission of inquiry that perhaps if they were able to do their job and identify the persons involved, uh, this would be the end to arson and violence in River State. Well, again, we've been saying that, uh, you know, um, what's his name? Uh, Governor Fubara has become the man. He's stepping up. Uh, he's asserting himself. And I think that's a very good development and that he would uh, sustain it, even if he's been backed by elders of uh, River State, but whatever it is. He's the governor, and he needs to assert himself. The father, the son becoming the father of the father, as I have argued previously on this program, uh, and he's following the example of the godfathers before him, he too is emerging as a godfather. The future of his own godfatherism will be here to analyze it and to determine whether it is right or wrong. That's the first part. The second part is that the 23 local government uh, council areas, whose chairman had been sworn in by this same governor, Fubara, uh, you know, could not uh, access their offices on Monday this week. Because in LMA, Emoha, Obiapo, Aoda East, and Equerry, local governments, you know, there was attack on the uh, various local governments. But the uh, various local government uh, chairmen have been able to seize control and they returned. In LMA and, uh, and uh, I think Equerry, the local government chairmen could not access their offices as a result of arson that had been committed. But they were there and they had their boys also saying, well, with them. If they, if they dare, let them, if they can dare us, let them show up. So what is all of this about? It's about chaos in River State. And I think it's important that they have a new commissioner of police on the ground, even if the police is responding a bit lately, to now say that, look, we have a responsibility as the police to enforce law and order in River State. You recall that President Tinubu intervened. Some people think he intervened too late. The police are saying that they were obeying Federal High Court uh, order to stay away from the election. But the police have now been reminded, wittingly or unwittingly, that their constitutional duty is to protect the state, ensure law and order, protect life and security in any part of Nigeria. And that is why I think that it's important that the conundrum about conflicting, contradictory judgments by the state high court and the federal high court is something that needs to be addressed by the judiciary. And uh, Justice Kudirati uh, Kudirati had pointed out that she will address the problem of indiscipline anywhere in Nigeria. And I think that this is a, a what do they call it? A test case for her in uh, River State. As for Wiki, Wiki showed up on television yesterday uh, and he was saying, well, you know, if Fubara knows uh, who the uh, arsonists are, why is he setting up uh, a panel of inquiry? And that, uh, in any case, he should just ask that those people should be arrested. He distanced himself from the arson. Well, Governor, what Governor Fubara is doing, basically, is to follow due process. He says uh, Governor Fubara uh, knelt down for him. That why did he kneel down for him? That he would like to know, did he commit an offense? Uh, you know, <laughs> there's a lot in River State that the people need to deal with. But I will end with Tony Kuhn's uh, statement on this program yesterday, who said that there should be a meeting of the Godfathers, Wike, uh, Sir Peter Odili, 
and uh, I think it's also a night, you know, or whatever, you know, that they should come together and decide to give peace a chance in River State. Because these are the main leaders of a River State, and they have their followers and the Godfathers. In fact, the suggestion from Tony Kuhl, who was very calm yesterday, perhaps the only calm politician in River State, all the other ones are, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, Tony Kuhl came here yesterday, and it was very calm. He said, look, the leaders should come together and say, the interest of the people must prevail. What must prevail is the interest of the people of River State. Tanya Cole has already given them the direction in which they can possibly go. Can they consider that and give peace a chance? And not create a 1965 situation in River State that President Tinubu would find himself having to struggle with. Well, he, he... So, guys, this is one of the things we keep saying that, honestly, we can lose that he's at fault. He knows that every Nigerian understands that we cannot go to court today and win Fubara, as in if our judiciary was, be, was to become or is a judiciary that people can really depend on. There is no way we can take or drag Fubara to court and he will win. Fubara has been this patient. Fubara has been tolerant. Fubara has always wanted peace. Fubara has, Fubara's body language proved that he wanted peace. But guess what? Fubara now has toughened. I mean, Fubara has toughened and it will be very difficult to reconcile these two parties because Fubara has made up his mind that since Wiki is looking for war, he is now out for the war, as in to make sure that that war exists. We can have this golden opportunity to have resolved what kind, any kind of issue that was existing between the, the two of them. But as it stands now, it will be very difficult because Fubara has toughened. Fubara has taken a very strong, strong stance. Fubara is not ready to kneel again before we can. Remember he said he's building hospital in Ubi Akbo, and he will ensure there's a psychiatric department there because they will start using it very soon, meaning for people like we can. <laughs> So guys, this Fubara, he doesn't talk, but he releases it. He releases it wire on wire, as a little, little, you know. He doesn't come out that hard, but the way he releases the thing, he's like he even called Wike King Jong Un or what? I don't know. You know all those language because Wike has gone beyond his boundaries. Wike has, you know, exceeded his his boundaries. He has. I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. The way Wike has just gone out of where he's supposed to, to stop. So you find out that even the River State people, those that were even still supporting him at the peak of all these things, people who were still behind him, all of them, almost all of them have done Wiki. It's just a handful, those that are being given money, because Wiki has the money. Guess what? He will just from Abuja be sending it to them there to hold protests, to destroy property, to do all kinds of things, because he has been sacked out of you know, his people have been sacked out of the LG local government areas as chairman. And now Wiki is just hanging. By the time they conduct the national, uh, the state assembly elections and uh, Fubara's people clear it again, Wiki will know that Nigeria is, no, Nigeria is never Ghana. Because as it stands now, the thing is, it's not really entering his ears. It's until the state assembly carries out their own election. And then those Wiki's 27 lawmakers and flushed out, then we can then know that, you know, Fubara is the man of the people. See, you can't win the people no matter how much you claim you have. You can just have your way for a very short time, but on a long run, the people will always come out victorious. The people will win you. So all the gragra that Wiki is doing, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. So I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Turn on the notification bell. Thank you.